crochet hook to the rescue all the time. If you are a knitter, have a crochet hook with you. <laughs> Michelle here and I'm back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. All right, so let's just jump right in because I have a bunch of finished projects to share. Okay, so the first one, I'm so excited about it. It is my skirt, my crochet skirt. Oh, it is lovely. Absolutely lovely. I really um, enjoy making this. Now, I do believe that this is a free pattern um, and I will double check on that for you all. Of course, I will leave links in the description box below to all of the uh, places and the websites that you can find this pattern. Um, all of these are on Ravelry, so you can definitely check out the links um, and it'll take you right to it if you're interested in making it. So the yarn that I used for this, let's see if I can show you. All right, so they're all using I Love This Yarn. And what I really enjoyed about this project is that it was a great stash busting project. My goal is to use up all this yarn, um, at least by the end of the year would be great. So I've managed to work it down to one crate of yarn. Um, yeah, I haven't really bought any yarn in a while, but you know, I really want to get this yarn stashed down before I even think about buying any more, but we'll see how well that goes. So the first color we have is toasted, uh, toasted almond, toasted almond. See, that's why I have notes. This is toasted almond. This next color is coffee. And this color here is called brown. And this color is called ivory. So originally, um, like I had to add a few things. Originally it does not call for a drawstring belt, but as you can see here, I added a drawstring belt. So what had happened was, um, I made the two X size, um, according to the pattern that would fit my measurements. And the thing is at the time it did. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I stretched it out or, or what happened, but um, it ended up being a little too big for me. So I ended up using the leftover ivory colorway that I had. And I just made this simple um, chain stitch drawstring and I weaved it in and out. And yeah, that's how this turned out. And so I'm so happy that I was able to wear it out. Um, a few weeks ago, maybe a week or so ago, I was able to wear it out. I absolutely love it so much. And um, my plan is to get rid of the drawstring. Um, and what I'm thinking of doing is folding the hem down of course, I want to put like some like maybe, I don't know, three fourths or one inch um, elastic band, put elastic band in here, fold it over. And that way I won't need the drawstring um, belt anymore. Instead, I'll just be able to fold it down and then have a stretchy band. So I think not only will it fit better, but it will also look better. I mean, I think this looks great, but I don't know. I'm not particularly crazy about having to put the drawstring band in because that wasn't my initial vision. However, it did the job. It looks great. And yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, what else did I want to say? Let me see. Oh, I dropped my notes. <laughs> All right. So, oh yeah. So I wanted to talk about um, the hook size that I used. So the pattern calls for a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And of course, if you all rem remember, I had no idea what hook size or what letter that was because most of the time you'll see 4.25, um, 4.75, but it skips right over the 4.5. So a lot of you all told me that 
um, with the furls hook. I think it says G plus. And then in other hooks, it just has 4.5 written on it. However, I did not have a 4.5 crochet hook. So what I did was I ended up using a five millimeter G hook. And you know, that also could um, be why the skirt is a little big on me. You know, these hook sizes, they're there for a reason. So that could also contribute to it. Um, so yeah. So that's what I ended up doing was using a G five millimeter crochet hook. So it turned out great. It's beautiful. Um, if I had to make this again or, you know, when I make it again, cause it is a great pattern. So I'm definitely going to use a DK wasted DK worst. Um, yeah, DK weight yarn, not worse. This is what I use. Worsted is what I use for this. And it is extremely heavy. Like, this drawstring was doing its best <laughs> to keep up and uh, not let me have a wardrobe malfunction. Um, but it is quite heavy. And so if I was to make this again, I would definitely use a DK weight yarn. But I love it. Oh, and it's so soft. And I really recommend uh, this pattern for you, especially if you have some uh, skeins or balls of yarn that you really want to use up. Maybe you had them left over and I really like the stripe detail. Um, I'm not a huge fan of wearing stripes across my shoulders and across my chest, just wide shoulders. I just don't really like stripes up top, but I love stripes at the bottom and this really fits the bill. Um, yeah, it's a simple, I think it was a simple two row repeat. Um, but if you can do the shell stitch, double crochet, you got this. You got this. All right. So let's put that away. Okay. So the next thing that I want to share with you all, it's something that you've already seen before, but I have blocked it. And what a difference it has made. So if you all will remember, this is my profusion cowl. Look at all those gorgeous colors. It just keeps going and going and going. Oh, okay. You can see the last little bit, but it is beautiful. So when I first, um, and of course, after all this time, I have still not weaved in the ends. What in the world? Um, but when I tried it on a few, a few videos ago, I noticed that it was kind of tighter on my neck and I really think that's because the needle size that I used was much smaller than the recommended needle size. So it was a little snug, not too tight, but just a little snug. So I decided to block it and it is fantastic. Um, I would say that I gained quite a few inches on this. I mean, it fits so well. I'll go ahead and try it on for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look at all that extra space. It just fits so much better. And I feel like you can see all of the colors a lot better now. Yeah. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> funny story. So I mainly work with super wash wool yarn and this is a non super wash wool. It is Peruvian Highland wool which has become my most favorite non superwash type of yarn. So this was the first time I've ever blocked a project using um, Peruvian Highland wool. And let me tell y'all, oh my gosh, the smell. Ooh, I definitely see why people use um, like a wool wash or a soak when it comes to blocking. Now I usually do a spray block. I put it down dry spray it with the water bottle and then pin it down. Um, or sometimes I pin it down first and then spray it either way. But this, I definitely see why people would do like a wet block on it, put some soak in it to make it smell a little bit better. I will say though, that once you're wearing it, the smell isn't there. It's just that when you're blocking it and the wool is wet on the mat, you're like, what was that smell? 
<laughs> so that was definitely interesting. And to be a non superwash wool, it it's actually pretty smooth. It's actually pretty soft. Now just wearing it, I do feel like a little. I think the word is maybe like toothiness. I don't really know how to describe it. Like you can definitely feel the wool on your neck. That's for sure. Um, but it's not uncomfortable, but you can definitely feel it. It's definitely different than superwash yarn. I don't really know how to describe it, but the wool really just grabs onto you and you can feel those little fibers. Um, but I'm not having any discomfort or itchiness or irritation or anything like that. It's just something different. Um, yeah, so we'll see this. I, I do believe this is my first project with Peruvian Highland wool. I'm pretty sure. So I've talked about this, um, cow extensively in other videos. If you want to know all of the yarn that I use, the hooks, um, that I use because I use quite a few mini skeins in this. So if you want all of that information, definitely check out um, one of my prior videos and I will show you all um, what I did. And I think I will probably, I might leave it in one of the end screens. If not, um, just go to my page and you'll be able to see this gorgeous cow. All right, is that all that I wanted to say? Yes, that is all that I wanted to say. So let me get this thing off. Cause here in North Carolina, it is quite warm. And when I am filming um, a YouTube video, I always turn off my um, AC or heating unit, which are what I'm using because it's so loud. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. So. I do turn that off so you all don't hear like that humming um, in the background. So let's see what else, what else? Okay, so this next pattern I have is the Empower. Yeah, that's how you say it. The Empower Bandana. This pattern came out ages ago, but um, I have finally made it. It is a beautiful cow. Beautiful cow. I just made this cow simply because I loved how it looked. I love the construction of it. It's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. So one interesting thing about this cow, let's see. I'm gonna look in the viewfinder. Um, after I finished this cow, I thought that the styling was a little odd and I didn't quite understand like, you know, what do you do with all of this? So I went and I looked at the pattern itself, which is designed by Laverne Benton of Busy, Busy Peach. Yeah, Busy Peach is her company and this is her design. So I went and I looked at how she was wearing it and I noticed what she did was she tucked it in like this. Yeah, see, that's instantly better. This is how she wore hers. I just, oh my gosh, I love it so much, so much. Um, but yeah, so this is really nice. I like how this looks. Okay, so before I get ahead of myself, um, this is a free pattern. And the hook size that I used was a 3.75. Um, tiny hook, but not too bad. And yeah, so it's a 3.75, which is an F uh, size hook here in the US. And this is the yarn that I used. Now this amazing yarn, it's a knit crit yarn and it's in their um, Yuru yarn. This is a silk DK. Oh, and it feels so amazing. But this colorway is called Beauty Berry and it is 85% merino wool and 15% silk. And there's, well, it was <laughs> 300 yards in this skein. So I had more than enough, um, more than enough yarn left over. And yeah, it is amazing. And I had originally started a knit project using this yarn, but I just found that it was a little too slippery for my metal needles. And I didn't have any wood needles in the size that I needed. Not, yeah, yeah, I didn't have any wood needles in the size that I needed. So I ended up um, scrapping it for that project. And I decided that I could probably crochet with it and um, have a better outcome with it. 
And I did, I crocheted with it and it was amazing. And of course my, my needles, you know, they're um, my hooks, they're aluminum, but um, yeah, I highly recommend that if you haven't already, try crocheting with yarn that has silk in it. I mean, it was such an amazing experience. I just absolutely loved it. So, um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, it took me about nine days to make this pattern. Probably would have, um, I probably could have gotten it done in less time, but y'all, I switched between knitting and crocheting and I go back and I go forth, back and forth. Um, so yeah. This yarn is just beautiful. And like I said, if you are a crocheter, definitely look into um, crocheting with this yarn or any silk yarn, really. So yeah, yeah. I think that there's like a misconception that crocheters don't use certain yarn. Like we don't use cashmere, we don't use silk, we don't use merino, we don't use yak. And you know, we can use it. It's for us too. So yeah, uh, amazing. All right, what else? I don't even want to take this off. I keep dropping my notes for some reason. What in the world? In real life, I am so clumsy. Okay. All right. So I have that. Okay. So I think I've said everything I want to say about this. I could totally keep this on for the rest of the day. I mean, it's, it's almost weightless. It's almost weightless. Yeah. Keep looking at myself in the viewfinder cause it's so pretty. And you all know, I love purple. I love purple. And that's why I made this bandana simply because I love the construction of it. Um, I've been wanting to use this yarn and yeah, it's just amazing. And I will show you all the back. It has like this asymmetrical construction. And this part here is seamed. But it's, for you all that don't like seaming, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, it's really short. But that's it. All right, so, mm, amazing. And now that I think about it, I have not blocked this yet. But to tell you the truth, I don't know if I want to block this one because it's already kind of loose already. So I don't know. I think I'm going to leave this one as is. All right. Let's see. Next thing that I want to share with you all is a knitted project. And in my opinion, this might be the prettiest thing I've ever knitted.
Okay, so the next project that I have is my Tat Root Cowl and it is by Patrice Perone Dolan. Okay, so I just love this cowl so much. You all just saw me uh, caking it up. I was just so excited to use this yarn and this is how much I have left. And to talk a little bit about um, the yarn, it is the Vitalana Ascendance in the color Broken Stones and it is 100% fine uh, Peruvian Highland Wool Sport. It is a sport weight yarn. It is beautiful. It is chainette. Chainette might be one of my new favorite types of, um, of yarn construction. I don't know, I get, you know what? Sometimes I get like distracted by the little animal fibers in here. It's so cool. Yeah, so cool. But yeah, this is it. It's so soft. Um, I did block it and when I blocked it, the stitches just expanded. It. It's just beautiful. That detail down at the bottom is what I love so much. And it still has a bit of a crease from when I blocked it. So I'll have to do something with that, but it is beautiful. And let's see, what else do I want to share with you all? I do believe that is it, but I will try it on. Let's see. Okay. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Oh my gosh. I love it so much. And it's just, it feels amazing. And I don't know if it being fine Peruvian wool, if that's making a difference, but this yarn actually feels nicer than the other Peruvian Highland wool. I mean, they're both great. They're both by Knit Crate, but it's something about this one. I definitely feel the fine part in it because you know, I definitely can feel the wool, but it doesn't have as much of that toothiness in it. It doesn't grab you as much. Um, but yeah, this yarn is just so pretty. The project is so pretty. I'm so happy with it. And I was almost tempted to like cast on another one. I was almost tempted. Um, but it's a really great project to make. Um, all you need to know is knit pearl, um, knit two together. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much all you need to know. Of course, I will leave the link in the description box below if you're interested. Alrighty then. So let's see, what else did I want to say about this? Oh, there is a small bone I have to pick with this project. So, um, I'm trying to think in, in the Ravelry page, I believe it said that yeah, it said that um, you should use a DK weight. And so I've been trying to stash bust and I had a skein of DK weight yarn lying around that I wanted to use. And so it, it called for a DK weight and it said that um, you needed at least 300 yards. And I was like, cool, that's awesome because this has 328 yards in it. So I did that and um, I download the pattern, buy it, download it. And then it says the suggested weight is Aaron weight or worsted. And I was like, whoa, is mine gonna turn out like super small? And then also the pattern was like, there's a bigger version. And so once I finished mine, when I compared mine, to the, the, to the sample, um, the sample picture that was in the, um, in the pattern, I was like, I wish mine kind of laid like on my shoulders. And I feel like if I had have made the larger size, then it would have. Um, but it's not a huge deal. It's just that it would have been great if I had have known that the pattern was actually like the sample was actually, um, knitted in a worsted or Aaron. So yeah, that would have been cool to know. Um, but it really didn't make any difference because I love it. I love it so much. Um, but yeah, so I had just planned for it to be a DK project. And then I was like, oh no, it needs Aaron weight. But none of that mattered. I used DK like the Ravelry page said, and it turned out beautifully, beautifully. 
So um, I did bind off using the Jenny's, Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. And I'm so glad I did. Feels great. The last thing you want is a really tight um, bond off or cast on, tell you the truth. So, um, what else do I want to say about it? Oh, so I did drop a stitch. I was so close to being done. I had like two rows left to do and then I dropped the stitch. But you know what saved me? Saved me? My trusty crochet hook. Crochet hook to the rescue all the time. If you are a knitter, have a crochet hook with you. <laughs> it definitely saved me. It definitely saved me so much. All right, let's see. What else, what else, what else? All right. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about this. So I will say one thing about this yarn is that it will break easily on you um, if you're not careful. So just be careful when you are handing, handling it um, because it will, it'll break on you. It'll kind of like split apart. That happened to me when I was um, winding the yarn and it happened when I was weaving in one of the ends. So just something to keep in mind. Be gentle. Um, yeah, now it could have just been me. <laughs> Maybe I put pull too hard or something, but, um, just something to, to think about if you get this yarn. All right, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else. Okay. The next one I have to share with you all is a crochet project. And I have finally finished my Solanelle. Here it is in all its glory. So let me put this on because I want the peacoat side to show. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. <clears throat> I am <laughs> ashamed to say that I've been working on this project forever. I totally forgot about it. So this is the uh, Knit Crate book that I got the pattern out of, and it is March, 2019. So I went back and I looked, um, see, where's that picture? Yeah, so there's the picture, let me fold this back. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, so I went back to like one of my old YouTube videos just to see like, when did I start this thing? And according to that, I started this Let's see, um, October, October 2019 is when I started this shawl and I just simply forgot about it. I put it in a project bag and it just sat there forever until I picked it up a little while ago and I was trying to decide like, do I want to finish it or do I want to frog it? And I was more than halfway, more than halfway done. And I was like, okay, so just finish it. And this project is really great because I'm trying to get over my whole, like, I don't use small needles, hooks, or crochet hooks. Like, I don't use small, um, small yarn or, or, you know, lightweight yarn or small hooks. I'm trying to get over that. This yarn is a fingering weight yarn. And, um, the hook size that I used, it, it called for two hook sizes. The first one was a four millimeter G. Mine was a 425. I don't know why there's a difference. Um, and also you had to use a 3.5, which is an E hook. And so it's just beautiful. And of course I did block it. It blocked out wonderfully. I love seeing the stitches as they spread it apart. It is beautiful. It feels amazing. Now this yarn, I had this much left and this yarn is on the Knitology Sheen Base in the colorway Titmouse and it is 75% merino wool, 15% silk, and 10% cashmere. Ugh, crocheting with this luxurious yarn felt amazing. I definitely um, felt the softness and the sheen of the silk 
but the cashmere was so soft and it's just, oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I do recommend this pattern, but it only calls for a few repeats, but you really do have to think about it though, because I definitely missed some stitches like on the ends and it wasn't anything catastrophic, but I will say blocking definitely saved me. Um, blocking this cowl definitely makes it look a lot better and a lot straighter. And also this beautiful edging here. That's just so pretty. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, another thing that I will say about this yarn, and I don't know if I can see any, but I did not realize that there were small pops of purple in this yarn. I didn't even realize it, but you know, that's the beauty of hand dyed yarn is that sometimes you get little surprises and there are like tiny, tiny specks of purple. Okay. I forgot what I was saying. I had like a tickle in my throat and I started coughing. Anyway, um, <clears throat> as I was saying, there are small speckles of purple in this yarn and it's beautiful. And um, I'm not sure if this part got included or not, but that's the beauty of hand dyed yarn is that you never know when you might get like a little surprise pop of color. So it's gorgeous. All right. I do believe that is all I wanted to say about this lovely, lovely project. I'm starting to get hot already. Oh, I know some of you all are wondering like, well, what are you wearing? What is this? Um, I'm gonna have to go back and find a old YouTube video with me explaining this because y'all, it's been so long ago. I can't even tell you like the name of the yarn. I do know that this is a bag o' day um, pattern. And I can't remember if I bought the pattern or I just watched her video, but I do know that much. And if I find all of those details out, I will um, leave them in the description box below. All right, so that is that. Okay, starting to get a mess around here. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to uh, move on to are my knit crate boxes that I got for May and for June. All right, so I have already opened these. So the first one is, oh, I forgot about my stitch marker. This beautiful yellow, Ooh, it is bright. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bright. So I got two skeins of this. Here they are. They're not quite as bright as they are on the viewfinder, but they are pretty bright. It is a super, super bright yarn. And it is in that beautiful chainette construction that I love. But this is the Vitalana by Knit Crate. And it is the Lofty DK base on the Lofty DK base. I don't think I've heard of Lofty DK. So, okay, interesting. I haven't read this yet. Okay, uh, it is 48% merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, 32% organic Pima cotton. That's interesting. That is one of the most interesting constructions I've ever heard of. And I think I'll be okay with the 20% of baby alpaca. We'll see. So far, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, so it's a DK weight, 274 yards, 250 meters. 100 grams. Wow. Yeah, that is a uh, fiber content uh, construction that I hadn't heard of. So that's cool. And this was for, let's see. Okay, so this was for May. This was for May. Oh, did I say the colorway name? Daffodil. <laughs> the colorway name is Daffodil. Wow, they had a lot of beautiful colors. Yeah, very cool. All right, also with May, I got this beautiful stitch marker by Kertrinkles and it has like this iridescence to it. I don't know if you all remember, um, I did get a um, darning needle by Kertrinkles as well in one of the boxes. I hope that you all can see that. 
but it is beautiful and it kind of changes colors when you move it. So that is so neat. It's like a, it's a little uh, painter. Yeah, it looks like his canvas is a ball of yarn. I think that's what it is. But anyway, very pretty. All right. Okay. Let's move some stuff around. So the next one that I want to share with you all is the box for June. And the box for June, let's see. The colorway is called Cucumber. So here it is. It's getting a little blown out because it's kind of a, on the lighter side. So here's the yarn. Now I must admit, I when I opened the box, I wasn't like, whoa. <laughs> but I have to admit it is growing on me. I think what I find so interesting about this yarn is um, once again, the construction or the, the fiber content. And I really have to give it to Knit Crate for trying some new things. Um, for a while, the each box was kind of having like the same kind of fiber content, but they've been really hitting it out of the park this year. So um, this is 34% cotton, 35% linen, 19% lyocell, and 11% nylon. And this is a sport weight yarn and it's 350 yards, 320 meters, 100 grams. So yeah, that's the yarn. And like I said, it's being blown up a little bit. So um, I'll make sure I insert a picture so you all can see this up close. So I will say that the yarn was not the most exciting thing in the box. The most exciting thing in the box was coffee. We got coffee and we got creamer. Y'all, I love coffee. I love tea, but I have to have my coffee. Like I might could skip a day without my tea, but I cannot skip a day without my coffee. And I'm really picky with my coffee. And so um, this coffee is called Copper Cow Coffee. It is a Vietnamese coffee. And I just noticed that it's a pour over. This is vanilla pour over. I've always wanted to try pour over coffee. Always wanted to try it. I guess I just thought I needed some kind of fancy contraption in order to get pour over coffee. But no, it looks like you, there's like a little handle that you put over your cup so that you can pour it over. That is so neat. I've always wanted to try pour over coffee because I'm more of a K-cup type of person, you know? And let's see, this creamer is a copper cow coffee, um, milk and sugar latte creamer. And it says add to coffee or tea for a 100% natural treat with no preservatives or additives. Very cool. And this doesn't have like an overwhelming smell. In fact, I really can't smell it at all. And so if you all do decide to get this box, don't worry. Your yarn is not going to smell like coffee and creamer. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's worried about that. All right. Let's, let's get organized. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you all would like to try out Knit Crate, you can use my coupon code QUEEN20 to get 20% uh, off your first box. I do believe that is still the promotion. Knit Crate is making a lot of changes. <laughs> so um, if there's any additional information that I have left out, um, just check the description box below and I'll have my link down there to take you to the website and see what else they have going on. All right, so let's go ahead and go to Babadon, which is just our chance to chat a little bit. All right, so for this uh, question for this video, it is what is your favorite coffee or tea? Or maybe you drink both. I don't know, I drink both, that's for sure. Um, how do you prepare your coffee or tea? Do you, maybe you don't like coffee. If you don't like coffee, tell me why. If you don't like tea, let me know. I would love to know. Now, when it, for me, when it comes to coffee, I'm not extremely adventurous. I like to stick to um, my French vanilla coffee. Um, 
There is a Walmart brand called Triple Chocolate that only comes around like once a year. So I try to stock up on that when that comes. Um, but when it comes to the teas, I'm definitely a lot more adventurous. Uh, I love chai tea. I love oolong tea. Um, oh, what else? What else? What else? Green tea. I love it, love it, love it. Um, and in terms of sweeteners, I like to use French vanilla creamer um honey let's see uh stevia um let's see is there anything else i like to use oh sugar in the raw yeah i like to put sugar in the raw in my coffee so yeah definitely let me know um what do you think about coffee what do you think about tea do you like it do you not how do you prepare it i would love to know because like i said tea i can go without maybe for a day or so but coffee, oh my gosh, I'm not a happy camper <laughs> if I have not had my coffee, okay? Please don't ask me any life-changing, life-altering, uh, major decisions. Don't ask me before I've had my coffee because, you know, I'm just, I'm not there yet. But yeah, come back after I've had my coffee and it'll be much, much better. <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, I do believe that is all that I have for you all today. I did want to say a quick shout out to my nephew, Brayden. I know that he watches. So hey, Brayden. Uh, let's see. What else? I do believe that is it. Oh, um, I do have links below to everything that I mentioned. I also have links to my favorite knitting and crochet projects or knitting and crochet tools um, that I use as well as the uh, links to my filming equipment that I use. Um, also, you can check out my YouTube community tab. There's a lot of fun polls and surveys and questions going on over there. I really enjoy interacting with you all on the community tab. So definitely check that out. Um, I'm not sure which poll is going on right now, but I do like to ask things like, what are your favorite needles? What are your unpopular opinions? All sorts of things. Um, if you want to support my channel, I will leave the links below for that. And so, yeah, I do believe that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I really would appreciate it. And also, you can find me on social media as Queen's Yarn Boutique. So until next time, bye. Mm -hmm.